All right, I am Sean John, and this is a tutorial for Frigate Double O Agent using a new strategy. The new strategy has a bunch of parts because it's actually really like a collection of micro strategies and optimizations developed and tested by Whitehead and myself to dramatically increase the odds of the hostages escaping. The old strategy involved utilizing a very loud phantom lure in the basement of the boat in order to lure a bunch of the guards above out of the way so they don't bother you later in the run. Unfortunately, this caused the guards to take very bad paths that would jostle, block, or impede some of the hostages as they were trying to escape, making it very unlikely that they would reach their escape points on time. The new strategy uses more targeted precision lures to try and get specific guards to go to specific places. That way they are not in the way of either you or the hostages while they're trying to escape. To determine just how much better the hostage escapes are now with the new strategy, I actually figured out exactly how much time each hostage has to escape on like a 104 to 108 pace run. And then I compared that against Henrik's escape times data to determine exactly which escape points each hostage could theoretically escape at in time. It turns out that the chances that the hostages pick suitable escape locations is about 1 in 60. So any odds worse than 1 in 60 are strictly caused by the hostages being blocked or the death animations of the takers being too long and the hostages being released later. Ted then made a practice ROM which only allowed the hostages to escape at those specific points that they would have time to reach before the end of the run on 104 to 108 pace. And I played that for a little bit and I got about two dozen 104 to 108 pace runs to the end. And I found that a complete happened around 50% of the time. So it seems that now the odds of the, the hostages escaping are that one in 60 times about 50%. So about one in 120. And this is compared to the old strategy where it was one in many hundred for like a 104 to 108 pace run to complete. So the new strategy drastically increases the odds of the hostages escaping. However, it uses the same route as the old strategy, which means that it is not inherently faster or slower than the old strategy was, and pacing on both of them should be roughly the same. For this same reason, I'm going to break this tutorial into two parts. The first is going to focus on just the new strategy, and it's not going to talk at all about movement, because a lot of people watching this have already played Frigate 00 and have uh, the ability to pace pretty well on it, and they just need to know how to perform the new strategy. I will discuss movement in a second part at the end for anyone who is not pacing how they would like to, or anyone who is newer to the stage. Okay, so for the first part, we are going to discuss the new strategy. And for that, I'm going to show parts of my original 107 as well as parts of my 107 dupe. Um, I feel like each run has different strengths and weaknesses, so if you notice that it's not all one run, that's why. So because the new strategy uses the same route as the old one, the beginning of the level is not really going to change. Um, we're going to go up the ramp and we're going to start firing bullets in order to do the bridge lure. And this is to lure all of the guards that are on the bridge down to this general area so that way they don't interfere later when we are rescuing that hostage or defusing the bomb. This lure takes approximately eight bullets with the Silence D5K. I actually shoot nine bullets here, and that's because the next section we need a little bit higher noise, so you need that ninth bullet to top your noise up. If you only shoot eight bullets, it is actually possible to shoot your ninth bullet somewhere around here just to top up your noise, and that's not going to lure any additional guards or do anything bad. Uh, if you find that you're having ammo ma management problems later in the run, it is also possible to use the PP7 for the bridge lure, and then you only need five or six bullets, um, and you, you could save a handful of bullets. But if you do the rest of the run right, you should not have a problem with ammo. 
Okay, so here is the first new part of the new strategy. And this is why we wanted our noise topped up a little bit, is because right after entering this door, we're gonna shoot one bullet somewhere near this corner. Uh, you wanna kind of be as close to the wall as possible when you shoot it. If you're still kind of in the door when you shoot it, it won't work. And this is to lure the guard that is directly on the opposite side of this wall. Um, we do this because when he hears us, he's going to kind of follow us down into the bottom of the ship and get lost, but he's going to kind of stay out of the way. He's not going to go on any of the hostage paths um, when the hostages are trying to escape, and he's not going to be in our path when we're trying to come back up. If we don't lure this guard, then later when we're doing the agent hostage room, he's going to shoot at us, and either he can hit you while you're trying to free the hostage, or he can blow up all the consoles in this room and wind up killing the hostage right after it's freed. So. Um, we want to lure this guy out, down. And I can actually show a video now of what happens if you do not um, lure this guy properly. Okay, so here's a video of what happens if you fail to lure that guard properly from the agent room. When we enter, we're going to see that he's actually on the left-hand side here. Uh, if you see him, then it's really bad. Uh, while we're bringing this hostage, he's going to shoot at us, and he winds up blowing up these consoles and also he winds up hitting us. So sometimes he'll hit you while you're trying to fire at the taker and that'll mess you up and then sometimes he'll blow up the console and that can just kill the hostage outright, which is what happened here. So um, this is why we lure him in the beginning of the level. Okay, so after you do the first lure, you are going to continue down these stairs. Um, notice that there is a guard on the left here that we are not gonna shoot at. We're not going to kill him or try to take his phantom. I know with the old strat, a lot of people liked to do that, but it's unnecessary. If you shoot too much, it can create a bunch of noise, and generally you just have to go offline and it loses some time. So we're just going to skip it, slide right by him, and continue down into the bottom of the boat. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put one bullet into this guy. Um, sometimes he crouches, and you might shoot him in the head, and he might die, and if that happens, that's great. But it's not necessary, you don't have to kill him. Uh, I definitely wouldn't shoot more than one bullet trying to kill him because you don't know what the noise is gonna do. We're just trying to injure him so that way he doesn't shoot us while we are going through this door because after we go through this door, we're gonna kill the hostage taker right here and if he boosts you right around here, it's gonna prevent you from getting a clean kill. So we put one bullet into that guy and then we come into this room and then we are going to kill this hostage taker. And when you kill this hostage taker, or really any of the hostage takers, you want to try to get um, limb kills. And that means that your final killing bullet should be on a limb. And the reason for that is the death animations for limb kills are significantly better than any other part of the body. They are shorter, which means that the hostage is going to release sooner and have a better chance of escaping. So this hostage, we call him the SA hostage or the secret agent hostage. He actually has pretty good odds of, es of escaping because uh, his route isn't that long and he's the first one that we release. So this taker, it's not terribly important. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to kill this taker sometimes. So if you have to do a body kill, that's fine. But you definitely want to avoid a headshot because those have some pretty long death animations, like seven or eight seconds. And that can really... Um, diminish the odds of the hostage escaping. So you're going to kill this taker, and then I don't do it very well on this run, but you're supposed to shoot about two or three bullets after you pass the threshold of this door. And the reason for that is because we're trying to lure a guard that is upstairs. Um, actually, this guard. There are two guards in the pipe room. The one on the right is deaf. We call him the deaf pipe room guard. And the one on the left is hearing. We call him the hearing pipe room guard. The hearing pipe room guard is going to lure either way at some point uh, in the next few seconds. Um, if you don't lure him here, then you're going to lure him when you kill the hostage taker on the other side of this wall. And the reason why you want to lure him earlier is because there's a line in the ground right around here where if he hears you before you cross that line, 
he is going to take a pretty good route into the basement and he is not going to bother any of the hostages. But if he hears you after you cross this line, so i.e. on the other side of this wall, he's going to run through the entire engine room and he's going to jostle and um, possibly block this hostage from escaping. And this hostage, the double O agent hostage, is the, um, he has the longest route. So he's usually the last one to escape. And um, most runs come down to whether or not he escapes. So you want to give him as much time as possible. And um, you definitely don't want that extra guard running against him in the engine room. Um, when you kill this taker right here, oftentimes you will hear a grenade go off at around this time. And that is because um, one of the guards in the pipe room, when you walk run by here, will see you and throw a grenade in this corner. If a grenade goes off, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to clear a bunch of guards from the hallway upstairs and actually give this hostage and the double agent hostage better odds of escaping, or the explosion is actually going to come through the floor or the ceiling in this room and kill the hostage. There's really not any way to know, you know, which of these things happens. So just play out the run. You could get lucky and it could give you increased odds or this hostage could also already be dead and it could cause decreased odds. Um, I actually have a video of, um, of what happens when the explosion comes through the ceiling. So when the grenade goes off, it will bleed through the ceiling and sometimes it will kill the SA hostage. But notice it will also generally kill a whole bunch of guards that are stuck in this doorway. So if the hostage survives, then you're going to increase the odds that he escapes because um, he has a hard time getting out of this room due to all of the guards that are stuck in the doorway. Also, it has the potential to kill guards upstairs, which may run through the engine room and delay the double agent hostage. So um, if the hostage survives, then it's definitely beneficial, but sometimes the hostage will die. And as I mentioned earlier... There's really no way to know whether this hostage lived or not, so just play out the run and hope that it gives you increased odds. But it's possible that you're already playing a dead run because the hostage has already died. All right, moving on. After we kill this taker, we're going to go kill the double O agent taker. As I mentioned previously, this hostage has the longest route and takes the longest to escape. Even if he picks the best escape point, he still may not get there on time if we have a long death animation for the taker or if he gets blocked by guards on his path. So we're going to try to do everything we can to give him as much time as possible to escape. And that includes getting a good death animation on this taker. The previous strategy used a headshot to try and get through here as quickly as possible. Instead, we're again going to go for limb kills. This takes slightly longer, but it's not, uh, it doesn't take too much longer. I've still paced 103s by doing this. We're going to take a slightly wide line so we have a little extra time to get some shots off on him. If you need even more time, you can get caught in this doorway a little bit, holding full speed against it to get one or two more bullets off on him and kill him and then just pop it. Once he's dead, we're going to open this door and start firing on this guard as early as possible. And you want to shoot like three bullets into his back and kill him. If you shoot too many bullets or if you shoot too late, you're going to lure guards from the floor above and they are going to be coming down the stairs when you're returning from the bomb defuse. And they can you can get a pretty nasty stuck on them. If that happens, it's just going to kill your pace but it's not going to do anything bad to the hostages. So it's not that big of a deal. You, you can still slip by them, but I prefer to just try not to lure them. So you're just going to get three shots in him as early as possible, and then come in here to do the bomb defuse. You're going to pause to take out the defuse like right after this railing. You definitely don't want to be before this railing because there's a... A stairway to your left that the hostage is going to run down and if you pause before this railing you can block the hostage from getting to that stairs so you want to be after the railing ideally at this post or just slightly after this post I do it just after the post you don't want to pause too late either if you pause near the second post or further 
then the guard we left alive in the hallway is going to run into the door frame to shoot at you. And he's going to block the hostage from getting in. He's going to block you from leaving. And he may also hit the bomb. So if you pause nice and early around here, he kind of stays off center and not in the door frame. And it's a lot better. I select the Phantom before selecting the Diffuser. And that is because the next weapon I want out after the Diffuse is the Phantom, because the Phantom 2 unarmed weapon switch, I think, gives the best consistency for the pipe warp. So we're going to do the Diffuse, and then on the way back, you notice this guy's in a nice position. He's not blocking the doorway. He wasn't blocking it when the hostage came through. I do a uh, weapon switch from the Diffuser to the Phantom right here because if I wind up getting stuck in the door a little bit, or if he is kind of close and he's blocking me, the weapon switch helps with the warp just to kind of squeeze by. He back boosts me, but other than that, it's, it's pretty clean getting out. You can go up the stairs. Notice there were no guards on the stairs because I did a, a very early um, kill in the hallway before the bomb defuse. We're gonna warp through pipes and then go upstairs to the agent hostage room. Notice there's no guard on the left side because of the lore that we did in the beginning. And then we're going to kill this taker. Again, you want limb kills. You'll notice that I kind of drift upwards and get a, I think, a headshot on him before he dies. That's just because I knew the music cues and I was a little bit late in this run. Um... I had already had 107, so I was going for speed over consistency, but you probably want to get limb kills for consistency over speed. Then you're going to come in and you're going to kill this taker, do the same thing. Again, get limb kills. This guard, you'll notice, is here. On the previous strategy, he's not there because he gets lured down from the phantom lore in the basement. If he gets lured downstairs, he takes a very bad route and he will block some of the hostages, particularly the SA and the double agent hostages. So we definitely don't want him to be lured down. If you come in here and he's missing, it means that your hallway kill before the bomb defuse was way too late and you shot him when you were directly underneath this guard and he heard you and he ran downstairs. That's pretty bad. So... If that's happening, then it means that your hallway kill you need to do earlier. This guard also is called, we call him the Upper Grenade Guard, or the UGG for short. And that's because he, like, I think one out of ten times pulls a grenade, and uninterrupted he will throw it at you and blow you up while you're doing the bug throw. So if when you're killing this taker you see the UGG pull a grenade, you're just going to want to flick over and shoot him once. And that's going to interrupt his animation, and he won't throw the grenade. He'll actually just hold it in one hand while he shoots at you. That doesn't really kill your pace too much. I've paced 105s having to do that. So if you're good enough at it, you can just flick over and shoot him, and you'll lose maybe one second. After you kill the taker, this guy's going to hear you. With the previous strategy, I think he's also not there. He runs downstairs. But uh, we don't do the Phantom Lore, so he's going to be there. He'll open the door for you. You just have to kind of see up him a little bit and um, like try to get body and headshots to kill him as early as possible and move through him. When you open this door to do the bug throw and pause, you want to make sure that you are kind of on the door saddle and hugging the left side, like hugging the, the, the crease of the door. And that's because... The deaf pipe room guard will have seen you when you did the pipe warp and ran through the box room. He is going to, at some point, try to retarget you, and that may happen, depending on what animations he did when, when you ran by him, that may happen during the pause to pull out the bug. And if so, standing in this position, your coordinates are technically, he thinks that you're outside the boat. He thinks you're outside here. And he will run outside of the boat around here to get to your position. If you are before the door saddle, he's going to think you're inside the boat. And then he's going to run through the whole agent hostage room and he's going to impede those hostages. So um, you, you want to make sure that your positioning is right and you're kind of in the corner of this door when you pause for the bug. You're going to throw the bug and then you're going to back strafe out similar to reverse hostages on agent 
because the same principles apply. You just released the agent hostages and you don't want to see the doorway because that would load the agent hostage room. You want to keep that room unloaded so the hostages remain unloaded and then they will not get stuck on the chair or stuck on other things and they'll move faster and, and get out a lot faster. You gotta wait until you see the bug land and then you can turn. If you turn too early, you'll deload the helicopter and the bug will fail. You need to come through here and then we're gonna do our last lore, which is shooting the phantom at, on, or near these stairs. And the reason for that is there is a guard on the second floor kind of behind this wall that we call the bad bridge guard. And if we don't lure him out, then he's going to hear us kill the hostage taker when we're on the bridge. And he's going to run in through the door that the hostage is trying to escape through and block the hostage. So I actually, um, this was one of the things that I worked on a lot. So I tasked it quite heavily and I can actually show a task of exactly uh, what is happening and, and why we have to do this lore. So I have my tasks open, and we're going to see that the bad bridge guard, which is this guard on the map right here, is going to be lured as soon as we shoot the hostage taker. So I'm going to start the task, and you're going to see that as soon as you start shooting him, this guy gets lured, and he starts moving upwards. And he's going to take a weird route. He's going to go into the boat, and then he's going to come back out. And he's going to arrive at the doorway around the same time that the hostage is trying to get through it. And see, he blocks him in the doorway. I have now loaded a different task, which is going to show what the bad bridge guard does when he's lured from outside. So we're going to shoot a bunch of phantom shots. And again, this is the bad bridge guard. You're going to notice that he starts to run upwards and into the boat. And he goes on a bit of a wild goose chase, running into the boat and then through to the other side. And he takes this path that is not going to bother any of the hostages inside the boat. And it's also not going to bother our bridge hostage as he tries to escape. So this should dramatically increase the odds of the bridge hostage escaping. So in order to do the phantom lore, you are going to shoot three bullets starting when you're on the bottom step. And you uh, only want to shoot three bullets, otherwise a different lure is going to happen, which I will show you in a minute. Um, so you just shoot three bullets, and then you go inside, and then you can make as much noise as you want on this um, hostage taker, and the bad bridge guard is not going to come in. Now there is a possibility that if you make too much noise, a separate double phantom guard could come in and block the hostage. So... I would suggest on runs where you miss the bug throw, practice this phantom lore and make sure that it is working properly. Make sure that nobody enters the bridge, not the bad bridge guard nor the double phantom guard. If the double phantom guard is coming in, one thing you can do is you can, uh, when you enter into the room, just switch to the silence D5K and do the kill with that. It's better to use the phantom because the Phantom does 33% more damage than the Silence D5K does, so you're more likely to kill the Taker. But if you're finding that you're missing your first couple bullets and you're, um, you're, it takes too many bullets for you to kill the Taker and the Double Phantom Guard is entering the room, then you should use the Silence D5K instead. So I also wanted to show the importance of only shooting three bullets with the Phantom Lore. If you go crazy with the Phantom, or if you even shoot a fourth bullet when you're at the top of the stairs, then you're going to lure two additional guards, and they are standing underneath the bridge outside. They're the two bridge guards that we lured outside in the very beginning, using the nine D5K bullets. They lured outside, now they're standing where we were when we shot those bullets, and if they hear you when you're doing that Phantom lure, they are going to run around, and you'll see here, they're going to block you on the stairs when you're trying to leave the bridge room. See, they're right here. So if you don't do the Phantom Lore correctly, these guys can sometimes even be on the stairs itself, and then it's almost impossible to get by. So 
you don't want to kill the run at the very last second. Just make sure that you're doing the phantom lore correctly. Only three bullets on your way up the stairs. So after you perform the phantom lore, you're going to want to kill this taker, and then you're going to want to pause in order to defuse the bomb. Now there are two ways that you can do this. The first is to try and slip to the right of the hostage after the taker is dead and pause kind of over here so that way you can defuse the bomb and you can immediately run out. Or you can do what I like to do which is while you're shooting the taker try to land one shot on the arm of the hostage and that is going to back him up so you can actually defuse the bomb through the hostage and you won't get stuck on the hostage when you're trying to leave. This saves a small amount of time. Um, I try to do it whenever I can. If I miss the hostage, then I just pause on the other side and, and do the bomb normally. Um, this run, I actually make a mistake. You can see that I'm looking kind of planar and I'm looking out this door. You actually do not want to do that when you're leaving the hostage room. So I'm gonna show a different run that I do this correctly. You want to have pretty heavy look down when you are leaving the bridge. And the reason for that is because the developers made a very interesting mistake when they were um, designing this level. And I think that they forgot that the front of the boat is actually higher than the back of the boat. So the escape points in the back of the boat are actually located in midair. And if the hostages are trying to escape in the back of the boat and they are loaded, they are unable to escape because they can't reach the escape points. They're, they're physically above their heads. So if you load the back of the boat and you load the hostages by looking at the back of the boat, they will be unable to escape in the back. Unloaded, however, the hostages are able to escape at those points. So you want to look down to prevent loading the back of the boat because you, if you look up, you could kill the run by preventing your hostages from escaping at the last minute. So after that, you are just going to strafe into the boat and hope that A completes. In this next section, we're going to talk about movement, pace, and quit out times. And I'm going to use two runs as an example because I feel like no run is really perfect and um, I'm going to splice them in the pauses to make it look like one run so that way I can highlight the better movement from each of them. To start off, we are going to, like with any other frigate run, back strafe off the boat. And the way I like to do this is to hold C down and C right coming out of the cinema. And just as the fade-in is ending, I turn to the right and I switch from back right strafe to forward right strafe. But for a split second in between, I hold just C right. And the reason I do this is because there's a railing here and a railing over here, kind of to my right, that the holding C right for just a couple frames kind of helps you pop onto the ramp in between them without getting caught on either of the railings. We're gonna strafe up the ramp, do this in left strafe. And the first real tricky part is opening this door because it swings outward and if you don't do it properly you're going to get stuck on the door or the door is going to get stuck on you and it's not going to open correctly. So you kind of when you get to the top of the stairs right when you get to the landing you want to do a B press on the door while you're swinging to the left and as your dot crosses the door you want to open it and then you want to swing to the left so that way you wind up to the left of the door. And then you want to go into right strafe for a little bit to go right into the doorway and then go back into left strafe to go down the stairs. So it's a little bit of a tricky movement, but with some practice, the with muscle memory, it becomes kind of consistent and it's very fast. I like to do a strafe change at the bottom of these stairs here. I know that a lot of people do their strafe change at the top of the next set of stairs. I've found that Doing a strafe change here, going into right strafe, and taking a bit of a wider turn kind of helps you just sail through this door without getting stuck on either of the sides of the door frame. Um, also, taking that slightly wider line means that you are, you're angled a little bit inwards, and if you get a boost from the guards behind you, a lot of the times you will, instead of going past the railing and ruining the run, you might just get hit onto the railing and still make it down the stairs. 
So I like to take a little bit of a wider, a wider line. Instead of going straight through, I kind of come in at an angle. You're going to strafe, change to left strafe at the bottom of those stairs. And this door is very much the same as the other one. It opens outward. So as you're swinging across and your dot is over the door, you want to do your B press. And you want to swing to the left, allow it to open, and then go into right strafe to move through. The only difference is that once you're in this room, I recommend going to C up to move through and shoot this guard. Because if you go try and do it in right strafe, and I think I might actually do it in right strafe here, you have to do this kind of... Uh, semicircular movement that doesn't really save time compared to C upping straight across and it makes the kill way harder. So I would recommend C upping and then once you get to him and you kill him going into left strafe just to pop through the door but I do a little bit of a, um, a C right on this and uh, it still works but I would recommend not doing that. That allows me instead to kind of C up through the door instead of left strafing through the door. This part, you're going to take this turn a little bit wide, right here. Notice how I don't go across the corner. I kind of come out a little bit. And this is so that way you have time to shoot this taker while you are moving through uh, and moving upwards. Since we're going for arm and body shots, we need a little bit of extra time to shoot at him because it takes three to four bullets, depending on how many arm or body shots you get. And uh, if you just run right in, you're not going to kill him without a headshot. And we definitely don't want a headshot. So um, you take a little bit of a wide line. You shoot him a bunch of times. If you need to buy even more time, then you can get caught in this doorway a little bit and hold speed against it while you shoot him. And I want to stress that since this hostage is the slowest one and really the, uh, the run breaker, you want to optimize all of your movement up to this hostage. You want to release this hostage when you're on like 104, 105 pace. Even if the rest of the run is worse and has stucks and loses a bunch of time, as long as this hostage is free, losing time is kind of like a double-edged sword. Yes, your pace is slowing down, but you're also buying more time for this hostage to escape. So your, your odds of getting an A complete are higher. So it, it's kind of like a trade-off. But any time you lose before releasing this hostage is just straight lost time. There's no benefit to losing that time. So you really want to optimize the run up to here. And then after that, you still want to go as fast as possible. But any stucks that you have or any any errors that you have, uh, while it's detrimental to your pace, it is still buying time for the hostage to escape. Here, um, you can actually... I kind of go into strafe and back again. You can actually just see up straight through this because I open this door really late. But if you just see up through, you can open it surprisingly early. You can open it somewhere around like further back than this. Um, like right after getting past, like right around here, you could open it if your dot was on the door. So if you see up, you can get the door open earlier, even though you are not moving as fast. And it kind of equates to the same pace. So it's easier to just see up right through, open the door. When you get into the door frame, you're going to see up through the door. And when you're on the saddle, you're going to tap C right. Otherwise, you kind of get stuck in the left side of the door frame. No matter how you come into it, the left side is very sticky unless you just tap C right to get through it. But you don't want to go into right strafe because um, you need to kill this guard after you get through the door. So you want to just see up until he's dead and then you want to go into left straight so you can get this door open and this door is a little bit tricky because it swings outward as well but there's really not that much room on the left hand side of this door um, and if you are too close and trying to get in this corner a lot of the times the door is going to hit you when it swings open and you're just going to get stuck in it and then this guard on the side is going to wind up shooting you and boosting you and you're not going to be able to get through the door and it, it pretty much kills the run so what i do is I do my B press on the door and then immediately let go of my C buttons for about a quarter to half a second and then I reapply my left strafe. And that just slows you down just enough to allow the door to swing out right before um, you pass the swinging door. And technically this loses full speed but we're going to pause about a second later anyway so it really doesn't matter. So let me see how I do that on this one. You can see I slow down for just a split second. 
and then I turn and I go in. And I stay in left straight this whole time. Uh, I just make a dramatic turn to get in because uh, I feel like left strafe after the pause has a, a better bomb diffuse. Um, it's just easier to diffuse the bomb. So when you pause for the bug throw, uh, not the bug throw, for the uh, diffuse, even if you missed a hostage taker earlier on, I would still wait to quit out until this pause because... Um, this pause is kind of about a third of the way through the run. You want a, if you're going for like a 104, 105, 106 pace, you want a 23 quit out here. So it's a very good spot to um, to quit out and just check your pace. Uh, if you're going for something slower, then, you know, 24, 25 might be okay. But if you're going for near the world record, you really want a 23. I've gotten 22s, but that's more likely to happen if you're going for a headshot on the double O taker which we're not doing. So 23, um, you can still get one of three fails with a 23. So it's, um, that's the quit out that you should be looking for at this, this spot. Coming out of the pause, you're going to want to stay in left straight. And I take the bomb diffuse a little bit safe here because I left strafe right up to the console and then I twist to the left. So that way my dot passes in front of the bomb and I diffuse it. You can actually, Diffuse it a little bit earlier if you start to change it to C up right around this post right here. And then you can actually diffuse the bomb from pretty far away, somewhere around this um, this post right here. And the problem with that is that sometimes you hit it, sometimes you miss it. So it depends on how risk averse you are. I generally take it a little bit safe and do what I did here unless I feel like my music is a little slow going into the pause. In which case, I'll try to salvage the run by doing a, a faster bomb diffuse. But it's really um, it's really up to you. So I do a pretty safe one. Then you go back into right strafe. I switched my weapon fairly early. I'm not sure why I did that in this run. Usually, I switch to Phantom in this doorway or right before this doorway. So that way, if I kind of get stuck on the door frame or if the guard is too close and I get stuck on him, the weapon switch helps me warp through and uh, get through it easier. You need to do a strafe change in order to get up these stairs and prepare for the pipe warp. You want to be in left strafe for the pipe warp. So I like to do my strafe change right around here, right in front of him. So that way if he crouches or something, I'm not going to get stuck on him. I'm just going to use my strafe change to go right around him. And there may be two guards here if you accidentally lured one from upstairs when you were doing the hallway kill before the bomb pause. So using the strafe change right here is, is pretty good for just kind of like getting around these guards. You're going to left strafe up the stairs and then you are going to, at the top, go into right strafe, cut across to kind of right in front of this pipe, and then you're going to cut left in left strafe and twist to be inside of these pipes pointing relatively at the silver box. That's kind of the best line for getting the pipe warp to work. So you go up in left straight, switch to right, and then overshoot and switch to left again and twist. And you want to use your weapon switch from phantom to unarmed. You want to hit B around the time that you're starting your twist, like right there, because the lag spike from the weapon switch is going to hit right as you get to the perfect angle um, pointed at the box and you should warp through. If your weapon switch is too early or too late and you're not at the correct angle, you are not going to do the warp and you're going to have to switch weapons again to try and get the warp and it loses a lot of time. It is also important that you have full speed and are holding full speed that whole time and that you don't drop full speed at all when you're trying to do the pipe warp. It's, um, it's one of those things that is a little difficult to do at first, but once you have the muscle memory, it should be pretty consistent, like seven or eight out of 10 times, and you should be able to do it pretty quick. Then you're going to stay in left straight through this door. This door also produces a lot of stucks. You're going to need the D5K silenced anyway, upstairs in the next room. So I like to switch from the Phantom to the D5K silenced here. It's a back switch. And that way, if I get stuck on the door frame a little bit, the weapon switch helps pop me through. I do it a little late there, but it was okay. Um, when you turn this corner, you're going to need to go into right strafe for the next part. 
I recommend not overturning this corner like 270 degrees to get into right strafe. I left strafe up the stairs a little bit and then I turn into right strafe. I don't know why, but it seems faster and it just seems to produce less problems. But when you get to the top of the stairs, you want to be in right strafe and you want to cut around this corner and kind of hug the wall. And right around here, you want to start twisting so that way your momentum carries you into the doorway and you um, just shoot through the door and are aimed right to the right of this chair. So um, the line you want to take is right to the right of this chair and you should be pretty much lined up perfectly to shoot this taker that's behind this console. As soon as your dot pops beyond the console, you should be lined up to shoot him. I'm off by a little bit on this and I have to adjust left, but... Um, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You're going to kill him, and then you're going to turn right while using left strafe, and it should pop you right through this door if you're positioned correctly, and line you right up to kill this guy, and you're going to do the same thing or the opposite thing here. You're going to turn left in right strafe, so that way you can um, see up this guy and move right through him to get through that door. When you get to the bug door you want to twist right before the pause and you don't want to be aimed directly out the door you want to be a little bit to the right so that way when you unpause your dot will be above this stairwell because that is the ideal uh, lineup for the bug throw the quit out at this pause for world record pace is around a 43 or a 44 so if you missed a hostage taker or if you messed up in some way, then this would be a good place to quit out and check your pace. You're going to come out of the pause and you're going to throw the bug. And like I said, you want your dot to be just over this ladder. And you're going to want to see up through the door. And you want to have forward momentum when you throw the bug. But then you want to immediately back out and back strafe, left back strafe away um, because you don't want to load this hostage door. This movement is, it takes a little getting used to. You want to kind of back strafe. You might hit this side of the, the door. And if that's the case, you might want to just drop to see up a little bit to take a, a line right into the door and then hit back strafe again. This movement uh, is covered pretty well by Water Temple Fiend's agent tutorial for reverse hostages so if you have questions on this movement it's identical here as it is to agents so you can refer to that tutorial once you get through there and you're going to turn after the um the bug lands you're going to want to swing and open this door and then you're going to want to keep swinging into this corner to allow it to open and there's a little nook here that you want to get into to allow it to open but you don't want to swing too far because you will go through the door into the next hallway. So you want to just kind of get stuck in this corner and then after it opens, you're going to see that I go into right strafe out here, but I think the most efficient thing to do is to just swing and stay in left strafe and go out. So I would actually recommend swinging out and going to left strafe. I just switched to doing that recently, so I have no example runs, but I know Ted does that and it seems to be a little bit faster. Similarly, you're going to come up, this door swings out, so you're going to do some kind of the same thing that you've done on all the other doors. You're going to swing into it, open it while your dot's over it, get to the left of it, and then change to right strafe, getting in. And then you're going to want to go right strafe and grind against these consoles to get as far to the right as possible. You don't want to just see up next to the consoles because if you're holding strafe against it, you're going to be pressing against it and you you're you kind of get edged a little bit further over than if you do see up and you'll get a better angle on this taker and you basically just want to shoot the taker and kill him and if you hit the hostage once in the arm or the hand it'll back him up and that could be useful because you can actually defuse the bomb through the hostage which is what you're going to see happen here so i'm able to to do it through the hostage and immediately back out You'll notice that I'm kind of planar here, and I can see out this door. That's really not good. Um, I should be looking down before I see this door for um, reasons that are explained during the strategy portion. So this doesn't have quick enough look down. So right as you're diffusing the bomb, you want to look down right before you turn. 
and then you're going to go left strafe and then switch to right strafe right after the consoles in order to slip out the door. And then you just have to get down the ramp and into the boat. And hopefully the hostages will complete. And if they don't, then you'll have to do it about a hundred more times until they do. So that concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on the forums or on Discord. And good luck getting your A complete.